we want to be able to access the cam and crank sensor as well. We're looking at the fuel pump now. So let's look at how we can set the scope up, taking advantage of what we already have, and just add the cam and crank sensor to it. Now we're going to tap into the cam and the crank sensor. The crank sensor is located on top of the bell housing. The cam sensor is located where the distributor used to go. They're both three wire sensors. And as you look at the diagram, you'll see in the crank sensor, there's three wires. It's got a 5 volt reference, DCM ground, and a signal wire. We're going to tap into the signal wire. And as you look at the diagram on the cam sensor, it's got the same 5 volt reference, negative ground from the PCM, and it's got a cam sensor signal wire. We're going to tap into both of those. Now we've got everything hooked up. We've got our amp probe around the fuel pump wire. We've got a wire going to the cam sensor signal and the crank signal sensor. And we're going to go around to the door now where we've got our lab scope. We're set up with the amp probe on the yellow trace. Now it has a red lead here. I'm going to take this out and color match this so we don't get too confused. I'm going to move that one over to the, to the red. Now I'm going to take the yellow, which is your standard lead, and put it in the yellow, and it has the piggyback black for the common. I'm going to take that one out of there and plug it in. Now that'll be the crank sensor. And I'm going to take my green lead and plug it into the green and piggy that back into the ground or the common. Now I'm going to take the black or the common that I had off of the red and I'm going to piggy that back in there as well. So now I should be able to look at yellow, green, and red. Now remember red was the fuel pump. Now you're going to have four leads basically. You're going to have the green for the cam that will go to the signal wire on the cam. You have the yellow which is going to go to the signal wire back probed into the crank sensor. And you're going to have your black which is going to go to a ground. And the red, instead of being an alligator clip like this to go to the crank sensor, the red is actually going to be the amp probe. I'm going to show you how I set this up. First thing we're going to do is go into setup. And I'm going to go into view. And I'm going to go into layout. And under here, there's display layout and units. Under layout, you can see that I can check one, two, three windows. Two windows this direction, or four windows. What I actually want to show is here's three windows. So I've got three windows checked. You can see I wanted to go just to one window. I could do that and we just have one there. So I'm going to show three windows and go back. Now I've got the yellow, the green, and the red. Crank sensor, cam sensor, and the fuel pump. So why is this important? Because with three individual windows, I can now manage all three individual traces separately. In other words, I can pick two for volts and one for amps for the fuel pump. If I was only looking at one window, all three would have to have the same. They would all have to be either set for volts or amps. So by choosing multiple windows, you can have multiple settings to understand here is to make sure this is going to read right on the green and yellow we're going to be reading millivolts so we're going to go over here and go to the traces the yellow trace which is number one is yellow we're going to bring this down to 10 volts same thing with trace number two which is the green we're going to bring that down to 10 volts Set it up to read what you want. Now trace number four is the red. Now right now it is set up for test lead volts DC 20. But I don't want to read volts because I'm with an amp probe. So what I want to do is select this and I want to go down here to read low amps. 10 amps. So now I've got the red trace set to read amps. Now, the vehicle is off. The key is off. And you can still see that we're reading the fuel pump. Now, the reason that is, is because when we pulled out this relay and put our substitute relay in there, and I put my pins in to duplicate these wires, what I was basically doing is just jumpering this relay. 
So the fuel pump is actually running because I've got it jumpered. You don't see anything on the crank or cam because the vehicle is not running yet. So now let's start the car. Now you can see we're reading all three. We're reading the fuel pump, and if you're familiar with the fuel pump, that is a good looking electrical diagram on a fuel pump. Now the crank and the cam sensor should be square waves. You can see the crank sensor and it's a square wave. Now the green one, which is the cam, all you can see is going up and down because of the sweep pattern. Now I've got this set on 10 milliseconds because that's what I want to look for in the fuel pump. But 10 milliseconds does not give me enough of the sweep pattern to be able to look at this cam sensor. You can see it going up and down, but I can't see it. So I'm going to go back up here to set up and I'm going to change my sweep from the 10 milliseconds where I had it for the fuel pump and I'm going to go up to 100 milliseconds. Now you can see my fuel pump is still there but I'm looking at 100 milliseconds worth of it rather than just 10 milliseconds. But I've already confirmed that it looks good so this way I'm just going to see if there's any dropouts. And now you can see the camp crank sensor located on the yellow trace and you can see the cam sensor. Now you still can't see the full cam sensor at idle. So just to take a better look at that, I'm going to go through my sweep again. And we're going to go up to 200 milliseconds. And now you can see the square wave. Now if I stop this, now as you look at the cam sensor signal, you can see right over here it's on. We have a clean off, it stays off, and it comes back on. Got a good square wave. Now the same thing with our crank sensor. Four, 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 four. It looks good. We're going to set this to run again now. So using a lab scope can really tell you a lot. They're tremendously valuable and variable, but you do have to know how to set it up so that it will tell you what you want to know. This has just been an illustration of how to set one up to read two different type signals on the same setting. Reading amps with a sine wave and reading bolts with a square wave, all displayed on the same scope.